everyone, I am Chen Zhang, a third year PhD student in linguistics at the University of Cambridge. Today I will be sharing with you some research findings on text picture integration by L1 Anna to English and Chinese speakers. Let's begin with a common phenomenon in comics reading. If you are a comic reader, then you've probably noticed that when we are reading comics, texts are often presented together with the pictures. For example, if you look at this comic here, if you only look at the pictures, then you can see a lot of emotional changes in this figure. But if you also look at the texts, then you know the reason of her emotional changes. She's making her New Year's resolution and she wants to start writing her thesis, but it's just always so hard to actually start writing. Such phenomena are not only seen in comics, but also in other formats of visual narratives as well. For example, in the animation SpongeBob, where a lot of time cards, which is basically a short sentence or short phrase, are often used to suggest the pass of the time. And this integration of the textual information with the pictorial or an even animation background is not disrupting the audience's understanding of the stories at all. What, however, is problematic is the absence of such bridging cues. For example, the Oscar-nominated film Little Women 2019 has been widely criticized for its time transition without bridging cues, and this really makes the understanding of the story very hard. These observations led to my research question, how we integrate the pictorial information and the textual information during reading comprehension. To answer this question, we designed this experiment here. There are three possible conditions. One is called the original condition, as shown in the middle of this graph here, where the stories consisted of four pictures or four sentences. The second condition, as shown in the first line here, is called the switched condition. It can be switching from picture to text or from text to picture. The third condition is called the missing condition, that is where the bridging event is, re is replaced with a blank panel, so there's no bridging information at all. And here is the story with textual background again, with the same three conditions as in the pictorial stories. The procedure of the experiment is demonstrated here. We used the fill-in-time paradigm where the panels or sentences were presented one at a time, and the reading times of each panel or sentence was decided by the subjects and was recorded as the dependent variable. After reading each story, the subjects were asked to rate how well they understood each story. We tested four groups of participants, namely English monolinguals, Chinese monolinguals, Chinese learners of English, and English learners of Chinese. The results are recorded here, and the first thing we'd want to discuss is, of course, the understanding rating. All four groups actually demonstrated the same performance, which is they rated the stories without the bridging event as significantly harder to understand, while the stories with the switched bridging event were as easily understandable as the original stories. This pattern applied to both stories with textual or pictorial backgrounds. And this result implied that the text-picture integration can be achieved during reading comprehension by all four groups of participants, while bridging inference generation can be cognitively more demanding. As for the reading times, the results were even more interesting. These two graphs here present the reading time of the English monolinguals of the bridging event panel. On the graph to the left, which is the reading time of the pictorial information, the reading time in the original condition, which is the picture, was significantly shorter than that in the switched condition, which is the sentence. And this cannot be explained purely by the surprise effect, as on the graph to the right, when the stories had a text context, there's no difference in the results. So this implies processing sentence in English might be more time-consuming than to process an equivalent picture. More importantly, the reading time of the critical panel, that is, the panel after the bridging event, also displayed different patterns in the two contexts. For stories with a pictorial context, 
the reading time was significantly longer in the switched condition than in the original condition, but for stories with a text con context, there was no differences between the two conditions. This is to say, the picture in a textual story didn't cause any distortion in reading comprehension, while texts in a pictorial story did. And this again approved our hypothesis that text-picture integration can be achieved without extra cognitive efforts, while the sentences in English might be harder to process than the pictures. As for the stories with no bridging information, not surprisingly, the reading time was significantly longer than in the original condition, indicating that the generation of bridging inference is indeed cognitively demanding. The performance of the Chinese speakers, on the other hand, also differed from the English L1 speakers. There was no difference in the reading time of the critical panel in the two conditions for both textual and pictorial stories. And these patterns imply that for the Chinese speakers, the texts are not more demanding to process than the pictures. This is also supported by the reading time of the bridging event panel, where there is no difference between the reading time of the texts and the pictures. But of course, the stories without any bridging information are still a bit harder to understand for the Chinese monolinguals as well. Taking these results together, we may come to an interim discussion. First of all, for speakers of both languages, the absence of the bridging event causes distortion in reading comprehension. This is in line with previous studies and suggests that bridging inference generation is cognitively demanding. Second, the pictorial bridging events in text stories did not cause problems for both groups, indicating the text-picture integration can be achieved during reading comprehension without extra efforts. The textual bridging events in pictorial stories, however, had different effects on the two groups. The English L1 speakers needed more time to comprehend such stories, while the Chinese L1 speakers didn't. A major difference between the two languages lies in the scripts. The Chinese uses a logographic script, which could be more straightforward to process and in some way picture-like. Therefore, the processing difficulties were only caused by the alphabetic English scripts. Based on these results, we tried to develop an updated model for the text-picture integration process. There are three stages taking place in the sensory register, the working memory system, and the long-term memory system, respectively. I also split the alphabetic and logographic texts to explain the differences between the Chinese and English results. The first stage is the facial register processing, where the facial features of the texts and the images are processed. The activated patterns, namely the graphemic patterns, which are the facial alphabetic letters and the logographic characters, and also the facial spatial patterns in the images, are transmitted into the working memory system. In the working memory system, different routes will be taken by the different patterns to build the situation models. The alphabetic letters first activate the lexical patterns, which will automatically activate the phonological patterns. The phonological patterns will then be parsed to form the propositional representations. The visual-spatial patterns, on the other hand, are depictively processed to form the mental model. This explains why the alphabetic texts are more difficult to process than the pictures. A detour to the phonological patterns has to be taken, while the facial spatial patterns can be directly mapped onto the mental model. As for the logographic characters, both routes can be activated. When preceded by pictures, it will be more economic to just activate the visual spatial route, and therefore there is no difference between the processing of Chinese sentences following the pictures and a picture following a picture. The final goal of reading comprehension, of course, is to build a coherent conceptual representation in the long-term memory, which involves the encoding process. 
The propositional representations are semantically encoded, while the mental models can be directly mapped into the long-term memory. This again explains why the pictures are more straightforward to process than the alphabetic texts. The L2 data further supports this model. Not surprisingly, the English L2 speakers performed in the same way as the English monolinguals. They needed longer time to read the switched conditions in the pictorial stories, but not in the textual stories. And they also needed more time to read texts than to view the pictures. This further strengthens our claim that the alphabetic scripts are harder to process than the pictures. The Chinese L2 speakers, however, perform differently from the Chinese L1 speakers, but more in line with the English L1 and L2 speakers. They showed disruption in reading comprehension by the inserted text in the pictorial stories, and they also needed more time to process the texts than to just view the pictures. I suspected that it could be because processing an L2 is just more demanding than to view the pictures, and therefore I made a follow-up analysis where I divided the Chinese L2 speakers into two groups according to their proficiency. Indeed, the results demonstrated that for the highly proficient L2 Chinese speakers, no distortion was caused by the textual bridging information in the pictorial story, but for the L2 Chinese speakers with a lower proficiency, the texts are significantly more difficult to process than to view the pictures. This comparison suggests that for the less proficient L2 speakers, the logographic visual-spatial patterns are not directly associated with the meanings, and therefore the direct mapping is blocked, and for them, a detour to the phonology patterns has to be taken. Finally, some take-home messages for you. First, our findings suggest that the bridging inferences can be generated in reading comprehension by both L1 and L2 speakers, but this process requires extra processing costs in both textual and pictorial stories. Second, text-picture information integration does not require additional cognitive resources. However, alphabetic texts might be more difficult to process than the logographic texts or the pictures. And lastly, the activation of meaning from logographic patterns is blocked in less proficient L2 Chinese speakers, and therefore they have to process Chinese characters in a phonological way. This brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention, and if you have any questions or comments, please do send me an email. If you want to know more about this topic, here are some references that you may find interesting to read. Thank you again for your attention, and I look forward to seeing you in the live discussion. Mm -hmm.